Right. Welcome everybody to a slew of recording videos. I'm going to be doing back to back because we're a little bit behind and I'm going to catch myself up and catch you guys up. So starting off, we are going to be doing our initial look at the data for Ketone because Ketone has come out kind of really faster than I expected, mainly because, you know, Woad of JP sticks to a fairly regular schedule, which is one character and then a vision card, then a character and a vision card. And yes, that does change when there's a collaboration, but those are special events. Most of the time, it's not that many characters in a given month. So yeah, here we have just two back-to-back -back 70 costs and ones that have also been basically kind of billed a little bit as rivals. Ketone, Shadow Links, two previous ninja type characters who have now found new life in another story. And we've already done our initial data of Shadow Links, but it, I want to bring this up at the beginning of the video because it's going to be interesting at the end kind to compare these two characters since they came out so close to each other. Different elements, different damage types, and figuring out which one was generally better. All right. So now that I've done my unusually long intro, let's take a look. And also, if you are interested in leaving a comment here, why don't you leave a comment and say, <laughs> why don't you leave a comment and say what you think we should actually call this one? Because yes, she is, Itane here is going to have uh, an official name. We always like our shorthand names in the uh, community. So what do we call her? Itone for shadow? I, I don't know. I'll leave that to you. So this is a 70 cost, three move, two jump. Uh, another story character who is a fist type damage dealer with knight and knight blade sub jobs. Uh, her she is a capable of equipping hat, clothing, and accessories. And as we've talked about before, her trust mastery has these kind of stats, an accessory, and it has the ability of decreasing chance of being targeted by six. Decrease AP consumption by 25 and increase reaction block rate by 50. So I think that this is a good TMR now that we've seen the numbers on it. It's a lot of reaction block rate. It's two cast for this for 24 TP a piece. It's only for her or the character who has this equipped, but generally I think it's totally fine. Now, master ability. Oh, sorry, I, I'm not showing it on screen. My bad. Here we go. Here we go. And you're caught up. All right. Eugene in uh, master ability is defense penetration acquired AP. And dream ability is a permanent decrease magical damage when the larger the area size is by 15%, which is just particularly really nice for decreasing damage. We didn't know about this yesterday, and it, this is one of the things why we wait for the data, because it gives us a better idea. Just being able to, for instance, have a good amount of magic resistance fairly easily. Uh, here, in combination with this dream enhancement, permanently can't be removed effect is kind of crazy. Also, debuff effect weakening uh resistance is pretty cool too given that ketone as we we're about to show off is and have said yesterday is immune to ct down this kind of just makes it though that she is while not necessarily the most durable character that we've seen recently she is a little bit more resilient against all the debuffing style attacks that are out there all right um, moving on, we'll jump into the supports. Supports are pretty good. Gets upgraded twice. Uh, her main one, agility of 12%, defense penetration of 40, decreased chance to be targeted by 5, and a 200% chance to ignore fatal damage when her HP is over 70%. This is a permanent uh, thing, so if she ever regenerates any kind of HP over 70%, the effect is constantly active and cannot be debuffed. It's just really strong and really, really, really good. Overall, I think that this is uh, like the one that you're always, always going to be running. 
I mean, there are times when you'll need accuracy, which is Nightblade's specialty. There's times when you'll need extra HP, maybe not slash attack resistant, but debuff weakening or resistance is also particularly, you know, pretty good sometimes. So there is chances where you're going to be using this. And as you can see, we do have this, uh, which is a untranslatable one or just uh, the initial thing. Could not have figured it out. So let's just go here real quick. And I'm just going to pull this up and make sure I get it correct. Uh, which I believe is just speed, defense penetration rate, and hate down. But it says movement up. So I'm moving. Had this, I thought it I had it in the right spot, but uh, I'll just jump over page really. Uh yes, uh that's the CT down enable. This is the one also that I think you're going to be running. Uh we'll talk about it in combination with another character in a little bit, but Itane, a lot of her kit, as you're about to see, has uh CT bonuses for herself. And not being able to CT down means that she is just constantly a fast character that cannot be removed. Both of her uh, original supports are really quite good. Speaking of which, let's talk about her <coughs> counter ability that is unique to her. She tends to counter all damage with an increase of CT of 100 for herself and absorbs 30% of the damage done for one turn. Now, it doesn't do too terribly much initially, but if it does go off, you're getting your turn faster and you are also absorbing 30% of the damage that you do to your next ability. Counters really aren't always that strong, so if you can just use your counter to effectively make another ability better and you're absorbing 30% damage, looking uh, pretty good. So I like that. Knight, potentially a little bit more chance for saving herself. And Nightblade, not really that exciting. So her main one is looking good. Speaking of which, let's go into her sub jobs and talk about this. Nightblade, the big thing to note, she did get the triple hit damage dealer, which also has the absorb 30% damage done, which is just another way that she can get her HP. Knight is maybe good if you want to debuff resistance for all elements for by 100 for a lot maybe some debuffing of enemies but overall knight is not exciting at all as for her main job increasing move and jump for multiple turns while also restoring 300 ct is a pretty good deal and moving to a unit panel with a triple hit for strike type damage is also overall pretty nice if we go up here and take a look at her main job, the main job is also looking pretty good because of all the CT restore that she has. You're going to see it here. Uh, you're going to see an agility increase here. You're going to see a decrease of agility for opponents, but that's not necessarily what we want. Restore AP, extra hit percent chance, dispel of all buffs for targets, haste, magic damage, and physical damage increases while also casting secondary abilities, which is something that she does have. One of her things in her kit is an accuracy increase, absorbs 30% of the damage done for three turns, so basically all of her kit gets a amazing increase of just being higher utility for herself. And when she casts this skill, it launches a secondary attack when she hits for her opponent. So if she hits with an AoE like this after casting this, then she gets the Noctis style secondary hit and she's restoring HP off of you too. And one other thing, you know, well, just on the list of things, reducing physical damage, take him with a barrier for three times. So once you have her into her 140, she can have protection against physical damage and magical damage and magical damage just cannot be removed but uh the great thing here is this increasing strike attack uh, strike attack resistance by 60 times or three turns for targets which is really really powerful in combination with other strike units that's 
a lot of potential extra damage from her abilities. Last but not least here that we need to talk about, although she does have a, a secondary effect which restores CT self uh, by 200 for each enemy killed up to one off of one of her attacks, just if she basically kills an opponent with it, uh, she gets a CT report. Uh, her last thing that we need to talk about is Limit Burst, which grants haste for three turns. She's already a very fast character, but this is great. It's a double hitter, and it hits two targets with a pretty good amount of damage. And that's a look at her kit. Honestly, now, you may say, Umbra, the stats aren't looking particularly good, but if you look at the Dark Party I've thrown her into, it's mostly Mage, so it's kind of focused a little bit more on that. If you take a look at Sephiroth here, he's not exactly pushing a high amount of damage either. And I think that speaks volumes to where this character is overall. She's quite a strong-looking character with a very synergistic kit. Uh, if you look at her damage you know survival capabilities like you do have to get through potentially barriers you do have to actually be, be able to target her and since she has hate down she's not going to be particularly that high of a priority for the opponents she's not an evasion character in the normal sense but she can be uh pretty how do i say this just she isn't a really super high target for your opponent either, allowing her to do some stuff and potentially other characters to come in after. And her stats overall still are pretty good and pretty comparable with some of her 100, or should I just say higher cost units. And that kind of brings us back around to talking about who this character is for. Is she for the Dark Element? And I think the answer very clearly no. I'm not going to go so far as to say that Dark would not want her on the team ever. I think she's quite good, especially for PvP and limited cost stuff. But if this character is to be particularly good anywhere, I think it's just going to be in a multi-elemental strike team. Strike has a lot of good vision cards that are already pushing good amounts of damage out there. And Bridal Alaya is no slouch in terms of how good she is even in the current meta, long after she has been released. And this character just seems like, in combination with Bridal Alaya's, you know, CT manipulation and her own CT manipulation and CT immunity, to some things, it could work just insane well together. And so for a data review, her data looks very, very strong. And when we come back, we'll test her out. Thanks for watching.